Hello, welcome to eCancer Discussions. I'm Christos Markopoulos. I'm breast oncoplastic surgeon, professor of surgery in uh, Athens uh, University Medical School. And uh, I have the pleasure to discuss uh, the RX Bonded trial and its impact on best clinical uh, practice with uh, Professor Giuseppe Curigliano, uh, medical oncologist uh, and head of the division of uh, early drug development and the European Institute of uh, Milan. Hello, Giuseppe. Thanks a lot, Professor Markopoulos, for your introduction. So uh, if, we, if we go back, we allow me to remind you that uh, for the last uh, 10 to 15 years, multigen assays are helping us to uh, have our treatment decisions more personalized and uh, more precise. Oncotype DX uh, was uh, the first uh, commercially available assay uh, for ER positive, HER2 negative uh, women, and uh, it was uh, validated retrospectively in uh, patients from uh, prospective randomized trials. Uh, from uh, very well-known worldwide uh, groups, uh, NSABP and uh, SWOP. And in all these trials, uh, proved to be uh, prognostic and uh, predictive of uh, chemotherapy benefit. Most of all, uh, we had uh, the first two large prospective randomized trials uh, Taylor X trial for lymph node negative, and uh, now the RX Ponder trial for uh, lymph node uh, positive patients. And uh, Giuseppe, I think you would agree that not all lymph node positive patients need uh, chemotherapy. Uh, so uh, this is what was missing, uh, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. I agree with you. The RX Ponder trial was finally a prospective randomized trial, including patients with the ER positive, PGR positive disease, or two negative, with one to three lymph nodes involved, and able to receive an adjuvant chemotherapy. Patients with a recurrent score between zero and 25 have been randomized to receive a chemotherapy followed by endocrine therapy, or endocrine therapy alone. And the major question was whether we need to give chemotherapy to all patients with no positive disease and a recurrent score between zero and 25. As you know very well in the primary analysis, women postmenopause between zero and 25 with one to three lymph nodes achieved no benefit from chemotherapy. So this was an important information because in the past, we gave a lot of chemotherapy to those women. But in the analysis, in the primary analysis published a few months ago, there was a clear benefit from chemotherapy in premenopausal women with one to three lymph nodes and with a recurrent score between zero and 25. In this updated analysis that has been presented during the San Antonio meeting, the question was whether ovarian function suppression alone in premenopausal women can be predictive of a benefit. But looking at the landmark analysis that has been performed usually after two years in order to understand, of course, if the suspension of the menses can be really the window to understand if there was an effective of a medical suppression of the ovarian function, demonstrated that there was a no invasive disease-free survival difference in premenopausal women if ovarian function suppression or not in the first 24 months assigned to endocrine therapy. So this was surprising for us because finally it seems that the benefit was still related to chemotherapy. So a numerical improved 
invasion disease-free survival benefit in premenopausal women was observed finally in the arm that received chemotherapy. Of course, very few patients received the inadequate ovarian function suppression in the air responder. But in the final analysis, if we look to the clear data, premenopausal women with zero to 25 recurrent score had benefit from the addition of chemotherapy to endocrine therapy with a 44, 46% reduction in the invasive disease for survival, distant disease free survival, and in the exploratory analysis, also PN1 micrometastatic disease, there was a still benefit from chemotherapy, even if a limited number of events. So How? this is still an open question. Yes. Right. Uh, however, we have to be cautious about all this. Uh, the first thing uh, I would like to mention is that uh, ovarian function suppression was used in a very small number of patients, and therefore we don't, we can't uh, have uh, definite answers to that. Uh, not forgetting the data we have from uh, soft and text trials, and uh, also uh, in regards to my field of surgery. Uh, the lymph node uh, micrometastasis uh, was only found in a very small number of patients, 206 patients, meaning, again, uh, I could uh, say we don't know. And uh, we can only say that there is a trend that might be the case that also patients with uh, micrometastasis have some uh, benefit on that. However, talking about uh, no benefit uh, of chemotherapy in uh, premenopausal women, uh, I would like to notice that uh, uh, we shouldn't forget that in the multivariate analysis, Songotype uh, DX, the recurrence score, proved to be, again, a strong prognostic factor, independently of uh, uh, the other findings, as well as the, the tumor side. So having all these uh, clear results now, uh, I think it would be very important in a clinical practice to discuss two things, how um, our life, our patient's life will change uh, from these results. And because it is clear that postmenopausal women will take uh, the, the highest benefit to, of these results. Don't forget that most of our patients are postmenopausal over the age of 50. Uh, most of breast cancers are ER positive, HER2 negative. So if we put together the two trials, TaylorX and uh, RX Ponder, we all understand that in clinical practice, uh, thousands of patients uh, will safely omit chemotherapy without any detrimental effect in uh, IDFS. So the question is, what are we going to do with the premenopausal women? Is there any room of uh, ordering oncotype DX in a premenopausal uh, women uh, with uh, one or two lymph node positive, for example? What? This is a very provocative question. You clearly stated that in postmenopausal women, we have a huge benefit from using the oncotype DX. But Eric Sponder was not powered for some group differences. And data interpretation in premenopausal patients is, of course, challenging. As you say, that we don't know clearly how many of them receive the ovarian function suppression. We don't know exactly where, when they became postmenopausal. And also, the number of patients with micrometastatic disease was very limited. So it remains unclear if ovarian function suppression can replace chemotherapy in premenopausal women, not positive breast cancer. And only a future trial that should be randomized should be considered to address this important clinical question. One thing that we can do is to analyze according to Oncotype BX soft and text. This can be a proposal, of course. And the second thing maybe is to rechallenge again the Bertie trial 
that you decided that you decided that and you designed it with other investigator many years ago, and that has been never completed. It was a trial exploring in premenopausal women chemotherapy plus ovarian function suppression versus chemotherapy versus endocrine therapy alone. So should I use in premenopausal? I believe yes, because not all women premenopausal should receive chemotherapy. I am still sure that some women with clinical pathological features that are favorable and with the low risk according to recurrent score can be still treated with endocrine therapy alone. And as you stated perfectly, soft and text seems to demonstrate this. So uh, we would agree that uh, even for premenopausal uh, patient, we could uh, analyze her tumor with Oncotype DX. And uh, in my mind uh, comes two situations. For example, if we have a, a premenopausal, but over 50 women, or if we, uh, where if we see the results of uh, Rx Ponta, there is still benefit of chemotherapy, but it's less. So uh, we could probably, depending on our discussion with the patients always, because I believe as uh, I do, you do also discuss all these results with uh, the patients for uh, the final decision. In this case, we could uh, go to hormonal therapy with uh, ovarian suppression. And uh, another case, it comes to my mind, it could be uh, probably a younger woman at uh, her 40s, not at her 30s, because there I'm sure that you should give chemotherapy with a very low recurrence score, meaning a good prognosis. And if we also see the two groups in our expander trial, uh, the first group up to 13 recurrence score had certainly a benefit from chemotherapy, but uh, this was much less uh, compared to the second group, even though there was no statistical significance. So uh, uh, probably in a woman with a very low recurrence score, uh, we could personalize her treatment by discussing the advantages and disadvantages of giving her chemotherapy. And uh, also coming back again to postmenopausal uh, women, I was thinking if we, yeah, I would like to ask if you think that there is any room in uh, having in a locally advanced uh, postmenopausal breast cancer, uh, certainly with lymph node uh, positive, uh, a recurrent score in order to decide about primary systemic treatment, endocrine or chemotherapy. Would you do that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I believe we have some clinical trials ongoing in which uh, there is, uh, of course, the use of Oncotype DX to select those patients who should receive chemotherapy. I did in my practice, even if there is no evidence from clinical studies, and every time I use it, it has been very useful. So I believe in the future there will be major role also in the neo adjuvant setting to select those patients with the R positive or to negative disease postmenopausal that can be candidate to neoadjuvant treatment. So you raise it a very, very good point. Mm -hmm. So su summarizing all, all this, uh, we should, uh, or before summarizing, we should also mention that uh, all this change is in, uh, in favor of saving uh, our patients from side effects and also the cost from uh, NHS, the workload can be uh, limited and uh, save resources, especially in our times. We need doctors to deal with a lot of other things uh, uh, and uh, save uh, cost by safely uh, omitting uh, chemotherapy. Wouldn't you agree that it, it's a huge change in uh, the system? Absolutely, we will save a lot of money from chemotherapy and also from side effects in use of by chemotherapy and uh, the quality of life of the, feature, the patients will improve dramatically. I completely agree with you. I, I think that they are planning also a quality of life analysis in our exponder, which will be 
uh, very interesting. So summarizing the data, the reserves we have from uh, our export uh, so far, because I'm sure that uh, we'll have uh, more data and analysis probably next time in uh, San Antonio next year. We could say that uh, for finally we have uh, strong data for leaf node positive uh, patients, uh, saving uh, uh, a huge number of postmenopausal women uh, of uh, chemotherapy and uh, all the toxic uh, effect uh, uh, without offering any advantage. Uh, clearly, there is an indication for chemotherapy in premenopausal uh, leaf node positive uh, patients with a recurrence score less than 25, but still the, there is a lot of room of using Longotype DX in uh, these patients because uh, as uh, we both agreed uh, at the end of the day and when we discuss uh, the results uh, with our patients, we, uh, Longotype DX can help us have a more uh, precise and uh, balanced decision uh, about uh, systemic therapy, and particular uh, about uh, chemotherapy. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, for um, Thanks a lot for your introduction and, of course, for the summary, because uh, you clearly got the point uh, of the use of this genomic assay in patients uh, candidate to chemotherapy in the area. Okay, I would like to thank you, Giuseppe, for this discussion and uh, help the e-cancer uh, discussions for their invitation. Thank you. Mm -hmm.